Hi guys, welcome at the second training of solving the issues in marriage. Last week we spoke about uh, problems and issues that we see in worldly marriages, a lot of divorces, a lot of problems, a lot of issues, and we have that same issue also inside the church nowadays. And um, after we are born again, we saw last week that um, it is important also to change the patterns of this world. Like Jesus prayed, Father, let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Very important to have it. And Romans 12 says, do not be conformed to the patterns of the world, but be reformed by the renewal of your mind. And it's very important that we get that in our life, that system. So we're talking about changing the patterns now. We're changing the patterns in marriage. And this course is going to be about communication between husband and wife. The most important thing that we need to talk about is the one organ that comes, that's actually the gateway to hell. James 3 says that the tongue can be used directly out of hell, which means that uh, everything that is evil, darkness, things that come from the devil can actually be, be brought into this world through your tongue. And what we see a lot in marriages is that people kill their marriages in using their tongue. We, we describe two um, main points in um, negative communication or using the tongue wrong. And that's intimidation is mostly done by men. It's raw, I don't want this to happen. And it's, 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 it's a physical, it's, uh, it's strong, and it's communicating towards a lesser opponent or your lesser opposite uh, in the marriage. And it's communicating, I dominate you. And that's a wrong way of communicating. The second one is manipulation. And manipulation is actually not saying anything, but trying to communicate your will, to bring over your will to, uh, to the other and trying to convince the other to do your will, which is not good either. Both are rooted in sorcery. And sorcery is basically trying to take control of another person. That's not how God meant it. And God wants to do it the right way. The one thing that we see is that we raise our voice to get what we want. We want to use our, our dominating posture to just get what we want. The, the goal is not to serve the other, not to give to one another, but actually to get what you want. And that's not what marriage is all about. But I'll explain that later on. The second way, uh, way of communicating is degrading or, or humiliating your spouse. And um, that is actually betraying the most important thing that husband and wife have together. Since the beginning of creation, Adam and Eve were naked towards one another. And um, that was physical. But if you look at the essence of marriage, a husband and wife are naked in everything. A wife can see everything of, of her husband and a husband can see everything of his wife. And when you reveal that to others, or when you degrade or humiliate one another, you break that shame zone, you break that, break that trust. That's very, very awful way of communicating. Also, one of the ways is trying to win an argument. The next point is, not, is to win that argument, not listening to one another. It's very important to understand that we are not here together to win that argument, but you're here together to find a compromise together. You're not better than the other person. And this is something that the, the, uh, in the demonic world, it's trying to dominate, to get your will towards one another. And in this case, it is actually um, uh, to win that argument, actually placing the other one below yourself. And that should be uh, avoided in any case. Also, the self-pity game. A lot of a lot of people, um, if they can't win the argument, they go like, oh, they feel sad about themselves and they walk around or they make it very clear that something is wrong. The self-pity game needs to be moved aside and it's very dangerous because at that moment we also try to convince the other person to do exactly what you want to do. We know of an example of a lady that every time when she asked, when she was asked, what are we going to do together? Um, 
and she wanted to go to the beach or to, yeah, to the beach and the rest of the family wanted to go to the forest that we see that once the rest of the family says yeah let's go to the forest and she doesn't get what she wants she started having headaches oh sorry I just got pain in my head I don't know how to handle this uh, becoming sad becoming self-pity and we see that the whole family um, adjust their expectations basically says oh if mother wants to go there we just want to be together let's all pretend we want to go to the beach and that's a, 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 a difficult kind of manipulation um, so it's very important that we need to deal with that one too the next one last one for this sheet is uh, keeping a checklist of all mistakes uh, some people really know exactly what mistakes the other person has done Yes, I know what you did in 1999. Yes, I know what you did in 2004 on the 17th of October. I still remember that. We don't keep checklists on the people that we love. It's the same as what God says. If you forgive somebody, you forgive it and you throw it in the deepest sea. You don't think about it anymore. Where does it go wrong? Well, the first point is very important. We need to understand that where the tongue comes from, the gate of hell, the owner of the hell, or the, the one who dominates in hell, or the, the ruler of hell, is the devil. And we need to understand that the devil wants to ruin every marriage, every situation. He wants to kill it and wants to uh, really uh, break it down. He doesn't like it when marriages are happy and doing well. So we need to understand that it's a spiritual war game. Because the enemy knows that it's God's plan, he also knows that he needs to destroy it. And um, we need to stick to God's plan. Very important. The second point I would like to talk about is that husband and wives need to understand that they are different. It's God's plan that they are different. They, they have different ideas, different thoughts, different minds. As we said, uh, uh, some guys or uh, guys are um, in their head like a, a cupboard. They have specific drawers. And you can open the drawer and inside that drawer you have a specific item. They can think about their new computer or their new car. They can think about sex and they can think about nothing. This is something guys can do. But with women, it works differently. Women can't do that. Women think, of, they, they, they say it's like a bowl of spaghetti in their head. Everything is connected. I don't know how that works. I'm a man, but I do know that it's some kind of works. And we need to understand that women are different and men are different. And when we understand that, we can also look at each other and we can expect different things. So if, if for instance, a woman uh, uh, tells a man, I have a problem and this and this and this happened, I'm not happy and blah, blah, blah. And then the guy normally, if he was a guy, would say, okay, what did you do? Try to solve it and give you the solutions for it. But the, uh, um, what a guy could really do, what she actually tells him to do is please give me a hug. I know how to solve it. I just had a rough day and I just want to have a hug. Something like that. And it's important to understand that there are differences and how to handle that. The third point is husbands and wives are not really listening to one another. If you don't listen to one another, if you don't take time for one another, you don't understand what is going on. What we see often is that, that uh, husbands and wives are talking before they are thinking. So somebody is mentioning something and you already have the answer. You already have replied because you think what the other person would say. And actually you rob that person of the attention that that person needs, your husband or your wife, your spouse. Also, spouses like to speak about what they want for themselves. So they, they start to create their own kingdoms. Uh, the, the, the guy only wants to talk about motorcycles and the woman only wants to talk about babies and, uh, and, and raising up babies or the other way around, doesn't matter. And what you do is that you start talking to one another, but you're not listening anymore. You're actually listening with only your glasses and um, uh, you're listening with your specific hearing aid. You can only hear what you want to hear. And that creates a lot of problems. The fourth point is that why husbands and wives don't understand what the essence is of marriage. The essence of marriage is giving. As I told 
maybe the other day um, uh, Lionel and Marion are a very good example to us uh, even when they were around 80 years old and we were surprised we thought we saw like two turtle turtle doves two young people adoring one another and when we looked at them they they we thought that is how we want to become old so a few years later we came we saw Lionel and we asked Lionel how is it with uh, Marion and um, uh, Lionel says, yeah, she died two years, two months, so many weeks, so many days, so many hours, so many minutes ago. And when we, we cried, we were sad, we were thinking about what, um, what happened to her. I asked the question to Lionel, I said, what is the secret of marriage, Lionel? And he says, Mark, the secret of marriage is giving. And I say, and taking, because I thought I knew it. And he says, no, you haven't understood it. The secret of marriage is giving. This is the essence. When we start communicating, when we also use in communicating the essence called giving, then we get to the point where we really need to get to. The fifth point is husbands and wives start to blame and punish one another. If something doesn't go the way you want, the easiest thing you can do is to actually just simply say, it's your fault, you did it, you did something wrong. You, can't, you can even not speak about it like that, but uh, <clears throat> um, it just comes into your mind. You give space in your mind for that. And then you start punishing one another. If you don't do that, I won't, have, uh, won't sleep with you. Or um, if you, don't, you didn't help me with the dishes, so I will not help you with, uh, with the garden. And you start punishing one another, and this is a wrong structure. And it actually becomes so bad that you get to the sixth point is where you get and take offense. And when you take offense, you lose respect. And that's actually the last step before you get divorced. And this is something we really need to break. This is the red alert. We need to really get back, get your things back in order and solve your issues that you have. If you've lost respect for your husband, get back to God, get back and go and talk to one another because this needs to be solved. So the next point is um, uh, positive communication tips. Of course, there are also positive ways how you can manage or how you can communicate in your marriage. Uh, we just spoke about all the negative points. Now it's good to speak about the positive points. So let's go and have a look again. A <clears throat> very important in a marriage is to daily encourage one another. <clears throat> You need to tell your wife that she's beautiful. Continue to tell her, you're beautiful. I love you, you're so beautiful. And show her and reveal it to her that you really think that she's beautiful. And not just like that, there are many other ways that you can encourage one another. But also he, he is also uh, uh, desiring positive words. So tell him what you appreciate about him. Tell him he's strong and that you feel safe with him. These things are good for a man. The second point, is take time to really sit with one another and listen to what the other person is saying. See, we spoke about what the result is if you don't listen to one another. But this time, it's so good to sit down and have time with one another. So spend some time uh, together. Go out and have dinner or uh, find a place where you can sit together, relax together and listen. Really listen. Ask questions. What are your desires? What do you want to do? Where do you want to go to? What do you want to learn? What do you want to... Uh, 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 where do you want me to take you? Or, or something like that. You can talk about many things and just sit down and listen to one another. Okay, when we look at the shame zone, we understand that we, uh, we, um, uh, we are revealing to one another our deepest issues and problems and, and hardships. You don't marry the perfect wife or you don't marry the perfect husband. You need to make the perfect wife and the per perfect husband. And that's why it's so important to be able to share criticism and to share it the right way, without blaming, without punishing, without losing respect, and also without humiliating the other person. So to share criticism in an honorable, loving and caring way is important for your marriage too. The fourth point, is being able to stop arguments. In any good marriage, you will find arguments. You will find that things explode or things are not going the way you want to go, but they are happening. And it's important that if you're a successful 
couple, you are able to stop the way the conversation is going. You're able to stop and recognize this is wrong. I remember in the past, my wife and me, we um, had um, a specific uh, youth group on Saturday night and at six o'clock, precisely every night, we had fight. My wife and me, we were fighting together. And once we recognized it, we knew at six o'clock, we're not gonna give the devil any food now. We're gonna stop this fight, we're gonna stop this. And this has helped us to really overcome our issues that we had. So that's very important. And the last one, don't use superlatives and tell what they feel instead of what they see as the truth. So uh, um, <clears throat> if you say you are never there, then the guy or, or uh, uh, your spouse will think, wait a second, but I was there three days ago. You're saying, you want to say something different, but because you use superlatives, you're actually lying. You're not telling the truth. So you can say, it feels like you're never there. And that makes it totally different because then you can speak about what you feel instead of absolute truths. Absolute truths, people don't like to hear. So we need to talk about what you feel and then that person can come from their side and understanding what you feel and speak from heart to heart instead from head to head, which is very important to do. So we can simply conclude that communication is very important in marriage. We know that when we look at communication, it is the key, the basic, the foundation of marriage. When you can speak well, when you can talk to each other well, when you understand each other well, then it's, it's, it's actually like a turbo engine on your back to get your marriage on the way to find the secret of marriage. So I hope you got something from this teaching. God bless and hear from you next week.